Hi, how are you doing? So, NAM is uh, officially over, NAM for 2019, or at least it will be by the time you see this video. <clears throat> and I thought I'd just do my top picks from NAM, things that I've seen, bits of gear that I really like. Uh, not necessarily, don't shoot me down, you might not like them, but I like them. So my favourite things, I guess, from NAM is, is what I'm going to show you. Um, first of all, let's start with a brand that I absolutely love, absolutely love. They are, for me, the innovators at the moment. They are pushing boundaries and they're doing it at an affordable price. They've been doing this for about two or three years and they've just got better and better and better and better at pushing the boundaries and inventing new things. We've already had the preamp pedals from them and they sound absolutely awesome. I would love to get uh, some of their stuff on my channel and to be honest, their new product I will definitely be getting on my uh, channel as well. Obviously, I'm talking about Moor, okay? Moor um, have the preamp pedals and they also have the GE200, which is, you know, like a cheaper and smaller alternative to Helix. But now they have really pushed the boundaries of the GE300, which we heard about last year at NAMM. Uh, the reason that the GE300 is so special and for me, kills other uh, multi-effects uh, modelers and pedals and stuff is because it's got the uh, Mule preamp live uh, embedded in it, which means basically that all the preamp pedals are in there, included, which are already good on their own, but also you can uh, copy your own amp by sending a signal, uh, plugging the Mule basically into the preamp uh, of your head, whatever head, high gain head you use, or whatever head at all you use, whether it's clean or high gain or whatever, and basically you can copy a footprint of the tone and uh, blend it in, and I'll be showing you how to do that. I'm trying it for myself for the first time on this channel uh, as soon as the GE300 comes out and is available in the UK. Now, the thing is, you can copy that already and you can do that already, and it's pretty convincing. Fluff's done it really convincingly with, I think it was an orange you used. Uh, I think there's a couple of other guys, like I think Beer did it. Uh, he did uh, the Kraken, copied the Kraken, and got a tone that was actually, to me, sounded better than the Kraken. Um, so, yeah, I really want to get hold of that. I really want to copy some of my EVH tones and see uh, how close it is. But on top of that, uh, in the GE300 now, there are impulse, you can load impulse responses into there. I really like it. Mua, yeah, one of my favourite brands at the moment uh, and the G300. Cannot wait to get my hands on that thing. It is going to be awesome. So that's my uh, first uh, favourite thing and my, my first pick from NAMM 2019. The second thing uh, which I'm really happy about is, I don't know how many of you know this, but I used to be a martial artist. It's not like a Kung Fu artist, obviously, but I used to be uh, supported by martial amps. And I once tried the one what JCM800 uh, and it was amazing. Now that was a limited run, unfortunately, but it was the perfect home valve amp. Okay, it was absolutely awesome. It sounded like a JCM800, it felt like one and it didn't blow the house down even if you cranked it up. So it was a, a great little thing. Now they've brought out Marshall English made uh, JCM820 watts that uh, you can... Um, turn the, uh, the the power output down to, I think it's five. I don't think you can get one watt, which is a shame, but you can get it down to five. And they look really interesting. They sound pretty good. If it's as good as the one watt JCM800, then it will be an awesome piece of kit. I don't know what the price is, but the price is gonna be a major thing to whether it, uh, whether it sells over here or not. The price, obviously in the US, usually Marshall stuff, especially the English made stuff is a bit more expensive, but we'll see whether it's a hit or not, but I think it will be. Uh, I think they sound great and you can't be, when, when you're playing lead, I really like a, a boosted JCM800 cranked up. It's a real creamy uh, feel to it and for lead work, you can't really beat it in my opinion. Uh, moving on, my third pick from NAM 2019 is, and I just love this guitar, and I loved it. I'm a Jackson fan, obviously, and I'm also a Jackson uh, artist, official artist, so I'm always gonna lean towards Jackson's. There's a new soloist out called Winter Storm, and I have ordered it. It's coming, it's already on its way now. Uh, I'm hoping I'm gonna be the first person that gets one on YouTube to demo, it'll be a miracle if I am. 
it'll be the first time I've ever actually achieved that to get a piece of gear before anybody so I'm going for it I'm going to try and get it uh, she'll be here in about a week or so so I can't wait I'll unbox it live on here and everything well not live but I'll unbox it uh, you know without editing it or anything and I'll show you basically what it is and it's on the screen somewhere now all these things should be coming on the screen for you uh, basically it's a maple top on a mahogany body uh, maple veneer sorry it's got black binding and it's in this uh, really nice white which is where it gets his winter storm name from I used to have a slat limited edition uh, slat XMG 7 string and I really loved it and it had a similar top onto this uh, and I, I sold it because I just didn't get on with the seven strings on there um, but I wish I'd have kept it just for the top because the top was gorgeous it got so many comments uh, it's kind of Broderick look about it and uh, yeah the Winter Storm Soloist Pro Series uh, looks absolutely stunning I can't wait to get it it looks really fancy my chihuahua is walking around behind me if you wonder what that noise is so yeah that's my uh, other pick moving on uh rev amps uh yeah they've got um a little amp out i'm not sure what the wattage is but the reason that it's so awesome for me is uh because it's got two notes um I don't know what they've done exactly or how they've done it, but I'm a big fan of Two Nuts Audio, as you probably already know. I use their uh, cab sims a lot and load impulse responses into the wall of sound, which is their trademark software. And basically, I absolutely love the Two Nuts stuff, and they've somehow built in the... Uh, uh, what's it called now? The bloody cab... Uh, the cab thing, the cab pedal, whatever you call it. The, the, the impulse response... Uh, pedal they've built it in somehow whatever it's called i've forgotten uh excuse me for that but this is on the fly uh yeah they've built that in and it's great it's a great idea it's built into a head so you can basically take that head straight to a gig straight into the pa and you've got all the two notes cabs in there and it's the first time i've ever seen it it's like a collaboration between rev and uh, uh amps and, and two notes and yeah it's exciting the only thing is for some reason they've only put a crunch channel on it not a high gain channel i was hoping that evh would bring out a micro head by micro what i mean is something five watts probably a solid state power amp uh, and a tube preamp similar to what the other a lot of other brands have i was really hoping for that and i was waiting for that and i held her uh, back in case one of those came out because um, I was going to order one and do it on this channel but they didn't bring one out for some reason I've got a lunchbox obviously but the lunchbox blows your house to pieces even when you <laughs> restrict the wattage on there it's such an angry little head um, so yeah the EVH didn't quite bring a um, much new but with all the uh, the L3450 watt and everything what they did last year they probably don't need any more amps they don't need any more EVH amps there's hundreds of them um, and they're all awesome, so why? Why do it? Peavy has brought the Invective out. Um, I don't know where it's made, that Invective. But although I do like Peavy heads, especially the 6505 and the 6505 Plus, uh, and the Triple X, actually, I like a lot. But they've brought the Invective out. It's a 20-watt version, I think, and you can power down to, I don't know, maybe 5 watts. But the problem with the Invective is... Uh, I've not heard it anywhere on YouTube and I know that PV don't seem to make good uh, low powered tube amps unfortunately the mini or micro 6505 I think it's the MH it's called I think it's the, the PV 6504 MH or is it the Piranha I can't remember but there's, there's two of them I can't remember which is which they're not great I don't, I don't like them that much they've not done a great job on those uh, no offence, PV. I do like the 100 watt heads. They're iconic heads, obviously, but the little ones, they're not. Um, they've not got the same balls. So yeah, I don't know what's going on there, but the invective might be different. I've not heard it, but uh, yeah, that's out. That's Mission uh, Mansoor's, obviously. Mission, excuse me a minute. I've been at the gym, so I'm getting my daily dose of protein. Uh, yeah, so. It's interesting. It's got a gate built in like the Invective. It's got lots of features on it. It's feature packed, okay? But I don't know. I don't know whether it sounds any good. I can't imagine it sounding bad, but I just don't like the other PVs, the other uh, cheaper 
smaller PVs. They don't seem to make good ones. Don't know where it's made the invective either, because I know PV. I think didn't they start making. You'll have to put in the comments, but I'm sure PV stopped making things in America, started making them China somewhere. Uh, somewhere in Asia anyway um, and they shouldn't have done that really because the, the heads are still quite expensive so we're not gaining anything as a customer really they're gaining a lot as a brand last but definitely not least a brand that I don't mention much on my channel and I've never had on my channel but I'm hoping to when I've spoke to my artist relation, um, Vintage Guitars <clears throat> have brought out an absolutely stunning V100, which is basically a single cut, you know, it's basically a Les Paul copy. Uh, yeah, I love Vintage uh, V100s, absolutely love them. I don't own one at the moment, I've owned one many years ago. I don't know what the new ones are like, but there's a new one that looks like this. It's in a natural finish and uh, it looks gorgeous and it's basically a copy there is a gibson release this year <clears throat> in the same finish and it looks great i'd love to get one of those on my channel we will see if i can do it or not, if i can get them to uh, either lend me one or uh, give me one that'd be nice if they gave me one but yeah i do like vintage guitars uh, especially the v100 i'm a quite a big les paul fan even though i don't own any uh, sometimes I just like that scale length and sometimes I just like the feel of the Les Paul shape um, just for a bit of change and a bit of difference obviously they're not as shreddy uh, the necks are as thin and flat and they just feel a bit different and sometimes it's good to pick up a different guitar to get a bit of uh, a different inspiration when you're writing music so yeah big fan of Les Paul big fan of Vintage V100 check them out if you want a cheap Les Paul uh, copy style esque thing. They're actually got a bit more. You can reach a bit more high up than you can on Les Paul, but they are great. And yeah, that's it. They're my top picks from Nam. Anyway, you'll have seen them all because as I'm talking, but pardon me, they should be coming up behind me or at the side of me or somewhere on the screen. All the things that I'm talking about, which is uh, great if it works. And uh, yeah, they're my top picks. So let me know what you think. I'm sure there's things that I haven't seen and things that I've missed, but they're just my top picks that I've seen they've caught my eye and I've thought that is a nice bit of gear whether or not they'll appear on the channel the Winter Storm Jackson definitely will because it's on order I've got it reserved right now and it'll be setting off in a couple of days um, I don't know about much I saw some Fender pedals as well which I didn't get time to listen to I'm not sure what they are but apparently they're really affordable tons of uh, features but I don't know exactly what they are um, yeah, as a Fender artist, I should really know what they are, but I don't, unfortunately. I've not got time to uh, check them out or not had time yet. Anyway, that's it. They're my top picks. I hope you enjoyed the video, even though there's no playing or demos or anything. Please, please stay tuned, because uh, when that Jackson turns up, you're going to see a lot of it. I can't wait. Right, see you soon. Goodbye. Subscribe, like, comment. Tell me what your favourite things are that, that uh, you've seen at NAMM or if you've seen them on YouTube or whatever. What are your favourite things for 2019, your pieces of gear? Are they the same as mine? Same as mine? Probably not, but never mind. Uh, we've all got our own tastes. Right, I'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, bye.